Erev Tov Chavrim. I'm Stephen Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live. We have very interesting news breaking uh, that just came out here. Got an email earlier from Brother Chris there. Um, it's called the Project Launch to Revive the Colossal of Rhodes. Uh, the, it was actually one of the seven wonders of the ancient world, and that was a giant statue that stood erect there uh, on, on Rhodes Island at the harbor. It was like a hundred feet tall, I believe, at that time, and it was a tribute to Alexander the Great, uh, or Alexander the Third, as many people know him, with his uh, uh, conquest, his, his, his uh, win against the enemy there that was trying to take the island because of his alliance with Egypt, the king of Egypt at that time. And, um, but anyway, after uh, the Egyptian army sent uh, some ships to back up Alexander the Great, where he'd been under siege, they were able to conquer the enemy that had been invading and they won the battle. Of course, the enemy fled. They left behind a lot of bronze and they melted the bronze down, it is said, according to history, and they built this huge statue. Now, the most of the European Union is coming together to actually revive this huge, colossal statue of Rhodes for the European Union. Now, if you remember, Alexander the Great, as far as historically speaking, was the, the king that actually toppled the Babylonian Empire. He was the first one to do it back in, uh, I think it was around 330 BC. He was known, Alexander the Great, because of his great conquest around the world. And of course, the greatest one was toppling the Babylonian Empire. Then we have, biblically speaking, the Babylonian Empire in modern days, and that's the Roman Empire, the European Union being a symbolic of the Roman Empire being revived, mystery Babylon, if you would. But what got my attention about this statue is that some people may not realize it's a statue for the worship of the sun god. In fact, the statue was, a, was erected originally back... Uh, this many, many years ago, to over 2,000 years ago, as an, a tribute to the gods for the victory against uh, Alexander the Great and, and the uh, Pharaoh of Egypt against their enemy. They erected it for that. It is a sun god statue. Let me read to you a little bit about the article here. It's, it's very fascinating here. To, uh, and of course, my concern is, I don't necessarily believe it is the image unto the beast, but it certainly is symbolic of the image of the beast because Rome was the one that was revived. I'll kind of go a little bit of a thought into that as well in just a moment here, but let me just share this with you here. It says, a 2,200-year-old statue to be revived again. A team of professionals, including architect uh, Ari uh, A. Pala, archaeologist Christos uh, Giannis, and public relations marketing professional Dionis uh, Mapotas from Greece, civil engineers uh, Ireka Fernandez Menendez, and economist uh, Matilda Pala from Spain, architect uh, Ambretta Lenon from Italy, and civil engineer Errol Dupi from the United Kingdom is now planning to revive the Colossal as part of the European Initiative. Thought that was kind of interesting. I think that's why it kind of links the uh, mystery Babylon unto this as well. Anyway, it says the aim of the project is not to propose a copy of the original bronze 40 meters high structure, but to arouse the same emotions that visitors felt more than 2,200 years ago. Well, that would be to worship the sun god, of course. Um, it also goes on to say here, um, the project team writers on uh, their website, this 150 meters high structure is born to be a museum, a cultural center, a library, but most of all, must regain its original function, a giant lighthouse, a point of reference for boats in the night, which project a light that can be seen more than 56 kilometers away in open sea, even from the coast of Turkey. Its skin will be covered with solar panels, providing 100% autonomy the God of the Sun, which lives only thanks to solar energy. Imagine that. A sun god. Well, it just it's kind of shocked me to hear this and, and to see this, but then nonetheless, there does come a time where there's going to be an image unto the beast. And I do believe that this foreshadows that we are definitely living in the hour. Let's look at the scripture here and 
another thing that was kind of ironic, I opened the Bible, and when I did, I opened right to the very passage in Revelation 13, not intending to do that, but it just opened to that very page where it speaks of the image of the beast. Revelation chapter 13, verse 11 says, Then I saw another beast coming up out of the earth and had two horns like a lamb, and he spoke as a dragon. He exercises all the authority over the first beast in his presence, and he makes the earth and those that dwell in it to worship the first beast whose fatal wound was healed. That was where the, the Roman Empire or the Mystery Babylon, that is the Vatican there, was nearly completely wiped off the planet there by the French back during the 1700s there. But anyway, they did revive, and it's taken them a couple of hundred years to really get going, but now they're conquering the world once again, just as Alexander the Great did back in his day. It says, He performs great signs so that he even, uh, even makes fire come down out of heaven to the earth in the presence of men, and he deceives those that dwell on the earth because of the signs which, it, which was given him to perform in the presence of the beast. Now, my concern there, if you notice, fire comes down out of heaven. We're going to have a mimic of the two witnesses. That's one thing that's really concerning me there. Telling those who dwell on the earth to make an image to the beast who had the wound of the sword and has come to life. And it was given to him to give breath to the image of the beast. If you think about what it is actually saying there, remember the Pope of Rome is considered the vicar of Christ according to their own theology. According to the World Council of Churches and many other religions around the world, he is the head authority for the religious beliefs of the world. And even now it has come out publicly that he is trying to put together a one world religion. This is a, it's not really a new initiative, but it is something that has been breaking news uh, here in the last week or so that's been going worldwide that he's putting together a calling for a one world religion. Of course, the Vatican's always believed that the Pope of Rome is the head of the one world religion as well as the head of all political powers around the world. And now <clears throat> he's wanting an image built, but it says that he will breathe, give, is given the power to breathe life into the image. If you think about it, he is trying to play God, sure enough. Because this is what God did in the Garden of Eden when Adam, the first human being, there, God breathed into this body. He breathed into the nostrils. And they became a living soul. And I say they because you have to remember in the Hebraic language, he says, nishmat. Uh, Chayim. It was God's own life in a plural form being breathed into that one body. It was hu humanity being breathed. Both Adam and Eve's soul were both put into the same human being. And then later, a proof that this was so was God had to separate Eve from Adam in order for them to have fellowship together. So here we see here now, what is it? Satan in the beast here, incarnate in the beast himself, is actually has power to breathe. See, watch this. Perform in the presence of the beast, telling those that dwell, so back up, I'm sorry, and he deceives those who dwell on the earth because of the signs which he was given in him in the presence of the beast, telling those who dwell on the earth to make an image to the beast who had the wound of the sword and has come to life. And it was given to him to give breath to the image of the beast so that the image of the beast would even speak and cause as many as do not worship the image of the beast to be killed. And he caused all, small and great, rich and poor, free men and slaves to be given a mark on their right hand and on their forehead. There's all kind of ways we could go as far as that there. But is it symbolic when it speaks about that he... Can he breathes into the image here? That it actually can speak? Or is it some kind of sinister thing that the Vatican has been working on in the background with their scientists? Could it be a cloned human being? Who knows what it may be? I can't even say. It's just something that's interesting because the Bible does say that he breathes into the image. He's mimicking God, trying to restart a creation so that he can be worshipped as if he were God, just as Satan planned to do. And of course, the statue here, the Colossal of Rhodes, 
is only a prefigure of the sun god. Sun god that gives, the, gives life to the plants on the earth. As far as we know that it takes the sunlight in order for things that are on the earth to live. God is the source of all life, though, nonetheless. Anyway, <clears throat> we'll be looking at some other things here. We'll be getting back into our office tomorrow evening where we can once again get back on the news that is going on, especially that news that's going on in and around Israel. And as well, we're looking to try to change the name of our channel to Israeli News Live. Dealing with prophetic news here, we will actually uh, not use uh, this particular platform for our teaching ministry, but we will be focused mainly on uh, world events and how it relates to biblical prophecy. Still be a teaching, no doubt, but much deeper and into some very interesting things, especially as we see the end approaching. I'm Stephen Benoon. You've been watching Israeli News Live. Shalom again.